Hi, I'm Abhi and welcome to Abhi's Food for Thought. Today, we'll be making a simple and tasty Jammu Rajma and a tangy Anardana chutney that goes very well with it. I still remember during my trip to Kashmir on the way from Jammu to Srinagar while enjoying the cold weather and the splendid view of the mountains all around. I tasted this delicious Jammu Rajma along with uh, steamed basmati rice, lots of desi ghee and this tangy Anardana chutney. Today, I'm going to try my best to recreate that simple yet tasty combo at home. Without further ado, let's get started. To make the Jammu Rajma, I'm using a special variety of Rajma from Jammu. These are much smaller in size compared to the regular kidney beans and it's vital to use this variety for this recipe. Today, I've taken about 100 grams of Jammu Rajma in a bowl. I'll wash these with water two to three times. After washing them well, I'll add about twice the amount of water and let them soak overnight. The next day, you can see how the rajma has swelled up well. I'll now drain the leftover water completely and wash it one more time. I will then transfer the soaked and washed rajma to a small pressure cooker. The chefs in Jammu slowly cook this rajma for nearly 10 to 12 hours. But to save time and fuel, I'll be cooking it in a pressure cooker today. We need to cook them till they're soft, but they should still hold their shape. We'll need to add water and cook this now. The chefs in Jammu cook this rajma in the water from the nearby mountains. So today I'll be using natural mountain water to cook these. I'll be adding about 400 ml of mountain water today. I'll also add some salt to taste. You can add whole spices to this if you want, but I'm going to keep it simple today. I'll pressure cook this for 20 minutes on a low to medium flame. That's about four to five whistles in my small pressure cooker. In the meantime, let's grind the lip smacking Anardana chutney. I've kept all the ingredients ready for it here. The most important ingredient is obviously Anardana, which is dried pomegranate seeds. I have about two tablespoons of Anardana here. If you want, you can soak them for some time to make it easier to grind. I'll also add one onion diced, a big clove of garlic, a handful of fresh coriander leaves, a handful of fresh mint leaves, a few walnuts, one Kashmiri dry red chili, a couple of green chilies, a very small piece of lemon. I'll squeeze only about 10 drops of lemon juice while grinding. A quarter teaspoon of cumin seeds. A quarter teaspoon of chaat masala. A pinch of black salt. Don't add too much. Salt to taste. And a pinch of sugar. We'll need to grind all of these with little water and mix the lemon juice. You can hand pound these using a mortar and pestle if you want, but I'll be grinding them in my blender today. I grind the anardana to a powder first and then add all of the other ingredients. I've now ground everything to a thick and smooth paste by adding very little water. You can adjust the consistency to your liking by adding more or less water. The anardana chutney is now ready. Let's check on the rajma now. They have cooked pretty well. It's important to use fresh and good quality Jammu Rajma and pressure cook it carefully on a low to medium heat for the correct time. Only then each Rajma will still hold its shape but be soft and mash well when we press them. I'll now transfer some of the cooked Rajma along with some water to a blender jar and grind it to a smooth paste. This is what the ground Rajma paste looks like. I have now placed the remaining boiled Rajma on low heat and brought it to a boil. I'll now add the ground rajma paste. This will give a nice consistency to the rajma. Give this a good mix. Let's now add a very simple tempering to this. Here I've placed about a tablespoon of mustard oil for heating. Heat it till you start seeing fumes and it turns slightly lighter in color. At this stage, it will be too hot, so I'll rest it for about one minute. In the meantime, on top of the boiling rajma, 
I'll add about quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder and about one tablespoon of Kashmiri red chilli powder. The mustard oil has slightly cooled down but it is still hot. Add the mustard oil on top of the powders and give it a good mix. You can even add a pinch of asafoetida, dry ginger powder or fennel powder at this stage if you want. Adjust the consistency with some more mountain water and check for salt. I'll now let this boil covered on a low flame for 30 minutes. You can even pressure cook it for a couple more whistles if you want. The rajma has been boiling for nearly half an hour now and it's almost ready. I'll finally add little desi ghee. Of course, I'll be adding more ghee while serving. You can even add a pinch of garam masala at this stage if you want. Since I've made the anardana chutney hot and tangy, I've kept the rajma very simple today. Once it reaches this nice, creamy and glossy consistency, I'll turn off the heat and serve the Jammu Rajma hot. For serving, I'll pour the hot Jammu Rajma on a plate of steamed basmati rice. I'll drizzle melted desi ghee on top. And enjoy each bite with the anardana chutney and some onions. The Jammu Rajma Chawal with Desi Ghee and the Anardana Chutney are ready. It's time to dig in. The Jammu Rajma Chawal and the Anardana Chutney are ready. Let me taste them. Let me have it with some Anardana Chutney and a slice of onion. Mmm, this is so good, the fragrant basmati rice, the creamy rajma and the aroma of the desi ghee combined with the tartness and the slight heat from the anardhana chutney, it's just too good. Wow, I've tasted quite a few rajmas but Jammu rajma will always be my favourite. The anardhana chutney goes very well with the rajma chawal so definitely try to make it along with it. This is like comfort food and it's too good, so do give this a try. Let me end this video with a thought. In today's recipe, I used Kashmiri red chilli powder. It has become quite popular now and I see many people using it because it's mild in heat and it imparts a bright red colour to dishes. But there is a reason why I have given its name in quotes. What's funny and shocking is that the dry red chillies that are used to grind this Kashmiri red chilli powder that is available in shops actually doesn't even come from Kashmir. This is something that I learned during my trip to Kashmir and my research after that. There are a wide variety of chilies grown in Kashmir, but they're almost never used to grind the bright red chilli powder that we find in the shops near us. The chilies that are used to grind these bright red powders that is available in our markets actually come from Shimla, Punjab, Rajasthan, or even the Bedgi chilies that are mostly grown in Karnataka are used to grind these powders. So if a chilli powder available in the market claims to be Kashmiri, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually from Kashmir. It just means that it's ground from chilies that are relatively mild in heat and that it will impart a vibrant red color to your dish. That's it. So, is it important to know where our food is coming from? How it's grown? How it's made? How it's handled? And what all does it go through in its journey from the farm to our table? Personally, I think it's very important because the devil is indeed in the details. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you again with another recipe.